let's say we are building a set of microservices. Here we have order service on the left and payment service on the right. To fulfill any orders, let's say the order service needs to talk to the payment service. And if this order service is built using a framework like Spring Boot, it will have a servlet thread pool wherein for each incoming request, a thread will be assigned from that thread pool to serve that request. That thread will do the request processing and once the response is sent back to the user, this thread will be freed. So in the communication between the order service and payment service, we could face two kinds of failures. The first one is called an immediate failure. So let's say an order service gets a request, a thread is assigned and whenever it tries to make a call to the payment service, the payment service immediately sends an exception of connection refused. This could happen when the payment service itself is down. And this can be dealt with very easily in our code. So let's say this line represents making the call to the payment service. We can just wrap that code in a try catch and whenever we get an IO exception, we'll just send back the default response, which could be a 500 error or some default response back to the user. But the important thing is our thread pool thread, which was handling this request is freed immediately because we got an exception. There is still a small downside to this kind of failure. So if the payment service is down, that means that even if we make 10 calls in a row to the payment service, and it has thrown the same exception. Why should we try to make the 11th attempt again? Because it's a high probability that even the 11th attempt to make the call to payment service will give the same exception. So we have this overhead of trying to make this HTTP call again and again. Immediate kind of failures are good because in that case we can quickly catch the exception. We can return the response and our thread becomes free very quickly. The bad kind of failures are called the timeout failures. So let's say in this case, the order service makes a call to the payment service and instead of an exception, the payment service takes a long time to send a response back. In the thread pool, we have assigned a thread for the request and this thread is waiting to get a response from the payment service. Let's say during the same time, we have another request. So we will assign another thread for that particular request. And even in this case, even the second thread is going to wait for a response from the payment service. And if the rate of requests to the order service is very high, then at some point, all the threads in the thread pool will be busy waiting for a response from the payment service. So now we are in a situation where our thread pool has completely been exhausted. We do not have any free threads. That means the order service itself will not be able to serve any more requests. So a failure in the payment service has caused a failure in our order service. And if we have a system of lot of microservices talking to each other, then one service can cause problems to a lot of other services. So let's say in this case, the payment service is being called by three other services. Any slowness in the payment service can cause an issue for the all three calling services. And now, since these three services have slowed down, it will cause an issue to all the services calling these three services. So a problem in a single service has caused a cascading failure to all the services. So to address this issue of cascading failures, we want to do two things. One, if there are a lot of failures in the payment service, we want to stop calling the payment service for a while and not keep bombarding it with request. This will allow the payment service to recover from overloading. And two, for every request, we should immediately send a default response because we are no longer going to make a call to the payment service for a while. To achieve this goal, let's say we add a component to the order service. Let's call it a request interceptor. This, as the name suggests, whenever the order service tries to call the payment service, all the requests should go through this interceptor component. Initially, when there is a request to the payment service, it will allow it to go through. Let's say it gets the right response. It will send back the response. Whenever there is an issue with the payment service and it does not get the response, there is a timeout exception or some other kind of exception. We will change the status of the interceptor to stop. 
so any subsequent requests for the payment service the interceptor will not allow to make the network call to the payment service instead it will immediately send back the default response we should not immediately change the status to stop because intermittent failures in the distributed systems are common so if a single call from an order service to payment service fails it does not mean that the payment service is going through issues it could be an intermittent failure so instead of changing the status on a single failure we should rather keep a count of requests that have failed so let's say this component also keeps track of how many requests have succeeded and how many requests have failed and let's say if the number of failures are above a certain threshold then we'll change the status of the interceptor from allow to stop and an even better way would be to track the percentage of calls that have failed so we'll keep track of last n calls let's say last 100 calls or last 50 calls and we'll change the status of interceptor from allow to stop only if the number of failed calls is let's say above 25% and now that this order service has stopped calling the payment service it will allow the payment service to recover from the overload and based on how much time it takes for your system to recover from overload we will set that time duration in a timer such that this interceptor will start accepting the request again after that particular time out period once the timer expires once we have crossed that threshold the interceptor component will again start allowing all the requests to go through to the payment service of course you cannot be 100% sure that the payment service has actually come up so it is possible that the interceptor has allowed a lot of next set of requests to go through to the payment service but the payment service was still down so a better way would be from the status of stop the interceptor should change its status to allow partial that means that it will only allow a few of the request to go through and these request will also help check if the payment service has actually come up so for most of the request we'll still keep sending the default response but only for some we will allow it to go forward and after this if the payment service has really come up then the state again changes to allow and all the next set of requests can go through and make the call to the payment service and this whole pattern of keeping a track of the success and the failed responses to allow partially allow or disallow the requests to go through to a dependent service this pattern is called a circuit breaker pattern and these are the three states that we spoke about as part of the circuit breaker so the first state is called closed so in a circuit if the status is closed that means the electricity is flowing through the circuit and in our case it means that a microservice is allowed to call the dependent microservice it will keep track of failures if the failure rate is about threshold the status of the circuit breaker will change to open that means the circuit is now open and no electricity can flow from one point to the next point it means one service cannot talk to the other service we will have a set of timeout and once the timeout expires we will change the status to partial allow which in the circuit breaker world is called half open so it will only allow a few calls to go through and check if the dependent service is back on if it is failed again the state will change to open and if it passes then the state will change to closed now for java there are two main projects which implement the circuit breaker pattern one is histrix which is created by netflix and that project is currently is in a maintenance mode and netflix team have suggested to use this other project called resilience for j so creating a circuit breaker is very straightforward we just have to call this circuit breaker dot off defaults and we'll give a name of the dependent service this could be any string in the next step the actual function where we are making the call to the payment service we will wrap it or decorate it with the help of a circuit breaker so circuit breaker comes with this method of decorate supplier 
there are also other methods like decorate runnable decorate callable where we can give it a circuit breaker configuration and we will give it our business logic which makes the call to the dependent service so it will wrap this logic with its circuit breaker configuration and it will return us the decorated supplier next will execute that particular decorated supplier if the circuit breaker is in a closed state and the request has gone through and is successful then we'll get the result as successful and we can return that result and if there is a failure and the circuit breaker is open then we'll get the result as not successful and in that case we can send the default response so as part of the decorator pattern whatever code we supply the circuit breaker will decorate it with its own code so it will have the logic to update the failure and the success rate and to update the status of circuit breaker and it will also have the logic to check the current state of the circuit breaker and if so it will have the logic to allow and deny the requests based on what is the state of the circuit breaker just like we decorated the supplier we can also use it to decorate our callable we can call this method of decorate callable and we'll give it our circuit breaker it will return us the decorated callable and now we can use any executor service to run our callable and if the circuit breaker is open in that case we'll get a circuit breaker exception where we can return the default response and in the previous slide we used all the default configuration of the circuit breaker but we can also have some custom configuration so in this case we are saying that create a circuit breaker where i want a failure threshold of 50% so anything above 50% then you make the circuit breaker as open do not allow any calls we can say wait for a maximum of 1 second before trying again and track the last 100 calls and whenever you have an half open state allow five requests to go through to check if the service has started again that's it for this video thanks a lot for watching and see you in the next one bye